All right, uh, I'm, I'm Tyler Glanzer, I'm the evaluator, and I have Mrs. Johnson here, uh, high school math teacher, and we'll be going over and discussing today her um, individual professional development plan, uh, talk about a few things. I observed her uh, an activity she did where she integrated technology, and so we'll go through a few things there, and I'll ask her a few questions. Um, we'll start with just talking about what you, your plan is, just to remind us of that. Um, we set a, a goal of within the first two months, you're going to integrate technology, um, and we kind of narrowed it down to two main ones, laptop and graphing calculators, into her, your everyday class procedures and to enhance student learning. And, and again, that goes along with what we're doing here as a building and district trying to integrate more technology and get students to um, use the tools that you know first of all our district has spent the money on and second of all to to try to reach some of those kids and trying to make it uh, more enjoyable for them or at least a better learning experience for them so <clears throat> based off that goal we're a few months into to, uh, the school year what are some things that concern you about your individual professional development plan well, of course, always the technology working when you need it to work. That's always a concern, um, which is not a huge thing. I mean, you can always address the issue when it comes up. Um, for me, making sure that I'm comfortable with all the technology, and that would be more with the laptop stuff rather than the graphing calculators. I'm comfortable with the calculators, but not 100% of the time. I just feel more comfortable with those than the laptops. Yeah. So those are two of my big concerns. Yeah, te technology, it's, I don't think it's a secret. Um, it's a great tool, uh, but can be very frustrating when it doesn't work, and there are mm -hmm. certainly times that it doesn't work. Uh, we've been trying to deal with getting our, our internet working a little faster and um, getting more points up in the school to do that, uh, but it still doesn't work 100% of no. the time. Uh, so what are some different tools? I, I know we... we you have laptops, graphing calculators, and we kind of narrow down to those two, but what are there any other tools that you're going to use to accomplish this goal? Um, some of the software programs that I have are directly related to math, like the Geometry Sketchpad that we talked about before that I'd like to use in my um, geometry class. Uh, the Desmos.com is a uh, website that we can use. Um, Eventually, someday, I'd like to be able to work a little bit with some of the TI Inspires that are out there, but I don't have access to any of those right now. So that is a goal later on down the road. Yeah. Um, an app that I've used is the Flickers, or I, I will use is the Flickers app to do some of the assessment. Um, and then just anything else that you, know, you find along the way that you think might be beneficial within your classroom. So what, uh, elaborate more on the things you find along the way. What are, you, what are you talking about there? More apps that are shared. I know Brenda and I do a lot of sharing with things that we've seen at conferences, things that we both um, follow some blogs and things like that, and whatever we find that we think might be useful in each other's class that we share with that. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, the, the day I observed, you had the graphing calculator up on the smart board, which is... is really really nice tool to be able to have mm -hmm. I know I've been able to use that before uh, what what's what's been most frustrating about the process you know as you as you've been trying to incorporate more technology into your classroom in the, these first few mo months what's been most frustrating for you I would say one of the things is class size now granted 19 in a class is not a huge class but when you're trying to get to everybody and to get every question answered based on the technology mm -hmm. um, that makes it difficult the other class that you don't get to see I only have nine mm -hmm. so answering the questions we get through so much more than we do with the 19 yeah. than we do with the nine yeah. and then making sure that you know if one person's helping somebody else and they're not hearing an instruction for one thing the time to go through and repeat and, right. and things like that so which that's part of putting the kids in groups and having them work together and answer each other's questions too so it's just part of the process yeah and not only content but if if technology doesn't work all the troubleshooting is times mm -hmm. two or times three when you got more kids in your classroom mm -hmm. too anything else there that you can think of that's been kind of frustrating at start sometimes it's not necessarily a frustration but my comfort level i need to be a little bit more confident in my capabilities 
because, like I said, I'm prone to stop and, oh, I don't want to break it or whatever. But um, And I talked about that with the kids, too. They have to be more willing to not just stop and shut down. Yeah. Yes, students kind of need to understand that there's really, to me, there's one of the best ways to learn is just to mess with it themselves. Um, probably mess up one or two times, but you learn from that as a way that that's not how it goes or that's not how it works. Um, but they, they, they want to be shown so much. They mm -hmm. want to be told what to do and mm -hmm. you tell them exactly what numbers to punch in on the calculator yeah. when they would learn actually best just by messing it with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, which that can turn into a frustration or a challenge too because how do you find the time exactly. to let them play? Exactly. You know, that, uh, that brings up another thing I wasn't going to ask you about, but what, I mean, how do you deal with that? Is there, because I, I know with the standards that we have in place for math now, you already feel like there's not enough time to get through everything. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about something important like allowing kids to be able to just play for a little bit, mm -hmm. how, can you, how can you do both? Can you? On a limited basis right now because of that time. Yeah. You know, we have to get this done because I know the next thing that we're going to do is that and we have to get it done before Thanksgiving or whatever, you know. I mean, you have so many time constraints and other things like the standards and benchmarks that limit you sometimes yeah. that it's hard to justify. Yeah. Giving that play time, if you will. Yeah. And you and you, you also run in. Not every kid has their own graphing calculator, mm -hmm. so the deal with even letting them take. Do you do you allow the kids to take them if they need them? They get check to take them, them to study hall. Okay. They do get to take them home on a limited basis okay. because I, of the numbers that I have. And our calculators are getting old enough that they're starting to drop very quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's still, but there's still no guarantee. No way to guarantee that those kids are using that time to mm -hmm. play around, mess around. More than likely, they don't get it, so they just quit, just quit. and yeah. wait till the next day. Uh, so, what are some things that you've learned about yourself then, as you've integrated more technology into your classroom? I'm not as bad with technology as I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. And there's more ways that you can use it in the math area than what I had originally thought. Yeah. So there are so many things out there that can be used. Yeah. It's just a matter, like you said, at that time. And my knowledge as well as the yeah. kids' knowledge. Yeah, yeah you, you, go to, you can go to professional development and conferences, but it even takes you time mm -hmm. to be able to do the play around. Yes. Yes. You know, mess with it and get it, get it to fit your classroom and your structure and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the observation and some, some things. This is the, what I collected. I just did the global scan observation um, procedure uh, as, I, as I watched you guys do an activity with um, linear programming. Uh, I believe the kids were given uh, a worksheet with three problems on it. You did the first one um, together, mm -hmm. and then the second two they were working in groups to try to solve the the other two, and they were using the graphing calculator, and, and, and really they were using a little bit of both, because they were doing the rough sketch by hand, yes. but then to find actual points or, you know, because you had to be exact on those two points, they are using the graphing calculators. Mm -hmm. um, so within that, I jotted down a few things and some things we can take away from that. I just, I've listed a few areas of strength and some growth, so if I start with strength, first of all, Implementing the technology which supports student learning and building, I know that you have some frustrations and you have some things that, uh, that some concerns that go along with that, but you are still supporting the building and district goals and trying to, in, in, to implement and use some of those technologies. So there comes in standard like 1B and 8C where we're, we're, we're following <clears throat> what the building and district goals are along with your individual plan. Uh, you use some key concepts and different perspectives related to the contact area, and so I think linear programming is just is we don't there's not a whole lot of things in math where it's easy to apply outside the math classroom, mm -hmm. but I think linear programming is one. When we talk about maximizing profit, that is yeah. definitely something that students I think is easier for them to see. Hey, maybe I can actually use this mm -hmm. someday. If, if they go into the business world and go into making and, and building things and then trying to sell them for profit. So that, that would entail standard two and more, more particular standard 2A and 2D where we're trying to um, 
teach math that you know and giving kids different perspectives to think about how we might use that um, sets high expectations for both behavioral and academic success you know your your classroom management is undeniable we talked about that er earlier um, in, in an observation and um, so stand almost all of standard three and then also I could add in standard 6c in there as well you know, linear programming is, is an upper level of thinking. There's definitely higher order thinking going on there. When they, they themselves are taking, and I look at the, the worksheet I have here, it's just a word problem. Mm -hmm. And they have to build the constraints for it, and they have to build the objective function for it. And then once they do that, then they also have to be able to graph them correctly and then find points of intersection and then figure out which point is actually going to maximize profit. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of steps there, and I think yeah. it's pretty hard. Anytime they're trying to glean from a word problem and come up with the equations themselves, I think that's definitely high order and setting high expectations for those kids. I know that uh, in other, other observations I've had or dealings with linear programming, there's a big jump between giving the kids the constraints and the objective function yes. and making them only have to figure out which point is it maximizes and minimizes mm -hmm. they can do that but when you don't give them to, they give that to them and they have to come up with the constraints themselves it can be difficult I don't it know does. if you've had that same oh absolutely <clears throat> and even with um, the, a group over here when I went around and was talking to them and I was checking what their constraints were he said wow just from yesterday to today it makes so much more sense how we're and you know we had done some of the same stuff yesterday but it was still new and overwhelming and then we concentrated basically on the technology part of it oh. yeah you have and you have to that's a good point because when the, as soon as the students have to do that for themselves then that's when they can understand mm -hmm. what they did in the past if you're constantly giving them the constraints or they constantly giving them objective function it's arbitrary to them it means right. nothing to them they're right. just practicing a skill at that point mm -hmm. Uh, but by applying some actual word problems, then it helps them understand the concept so much right. better. Um, uh, knowledge of technology, I know that's part of the plan, but um, I thought at least in the observation part that I had, your, your graphs of the technology and being able to troubleshoot different issues was, was an area of strength. So I've, that would cover standard 7A and standard 4F. And then creates positive learning community with collaboration. You're, you're, you got the kids in groups. I observed the second time the same thing I observed the first time. Kids are, they, they're used to it, they work together, they're fine with it. We don't have any issues, it didn't seem like, between mm -hmm. two kids. In fact, they were in different groups the second time because yes. you would mix it up and so they were different kids, but it didn't change how the collaboration part. So uh, again, that would cover standard 6A uh, very much so. And so that, again, in, the, in my global scan, I have that all outlined there and, you know, I, those are just some things I jotted down to myself and it kind of shows then the standards, the Iowa teaching standards that we're for sure are hitting. Growth areas, if I transition to that, uh, that's always, I think I mentioned it last time, it's a lot harder for me to see. And sometimes it, I write down some growth areas and it's just because I didn't see it on a particular day. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I, we discussed that doesn't mean that, I, it's, that it's not happening, but I'd like to talk about it. Mostly standard five is where I would see that just, again, how are we going to tell that the kids, how are we going to prove that the kids are actually learning or doing what we want them to learn or do? Mm -hmm. And I think, that's, I think that's really a constant battle for teachers to be able mm -hmm. to come up with good assessments, to be able to tell whether it, and not only is it, is it, is it getting to the students, but is it getting to all the students? Right. So I put, you know, communicates the assessments criteria, uses multiple assessments as a guide, guides students in assessing their own learning. I kind of put that all underneath that because mm -hmm. it all kind of entails that standard five and assessing the students. I also, making learning experience meaningful and accessible for all students is a growth area. Again, and we discussed this a little bit before, so I'd like to talk about it now. We're trying to bring more technology to students because we feel like for some students that's a way to catch them. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, it can hurt the ones who are not technology savvy. Have you witnessed any of that in your classroom? The kid, you know, the kids who are technology savvy versus who are not, is that causing any issues? Not really. They, they start out and it's not as much that they're not technology savvy, it's just that 
oh, something new I have to learn besides the content and things like that. And we go through, and in chapter four, we deal with the graphing calculators a lot yeah. in the second half of the chapter. And that's with the matrices and things like that. And we go through and they have to learn it by hand because I don't believe technology should do something for them that yeah. they don't already know how yeah. to do. Yeah. Um, and we talk about the fact that, yeah, you know what? Learning the process is a little bit time consuming, but by the time you're finished and that little piece of technology in your hand can save you so much time here so that yeah. overall in the big picture, there's so much more time saved. Yeah. They usually come around. Yeah. But I always give them that option, even yeah. with this one I did not. I wanted them to work on it using the graphing calculator. But the sure. problem from the book assignment that they had done for that day, I told them it was their choice. They could either okay. do it by hand or they could use the calculators. Do you have many that chooses to go by hand? No. Yeah. No. You know, I guess perhaps it's, it's, it is a non-issue because we live in a world where most everybody's fairly comfortable with technology, yes. at least the generation we're dealing with mm -hmm. right now. So, And I can honestly say that's changed in my classroom what I'm seeing.